Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankarayas Academy. These are the list of news articles selected for today's analysis and their page numbers in different editions of the newspaper. The link for the handwritten notes in the PDF format and the timestamping of the discussed articles are provided in the description and also in the comment section for the benefit of mobile phone viewers. Now let's move on to our first session, the discussion on previous year prelims questions from prelims 2020. Now this question is with reference to IAEA safeguards. Here IAEA stands for International Atomic Energy Agency. The question reads, in India, why are some nuclear reactors kept under International Atomic Energy Agency safeguards while others are not? Some use uranium and others use thorium. Some use imported uranium and others use domestic supplies. Some are operated by foreign enterprises and others are operated by domestic enterprises. And some are state-owned and others are privately owned. Now, if you see, foreign direct investment is prohibited in atomic energy in our country. So, therefore, option C is wrong. It says that some are operated by foreign enterprises. That statement is wrong. Now, come to option D. It states that some are state-owned and others are privately owned. See, the only industries which are now reserved for the public sector are the defense equipment, atomic energy generation and the railway transport. Though defense equipment and railways have been liberalized to some extent, atomic energy still remains with the government. So option D is wrong. And coming to atomic energy, presently two central public sector enterprises are involved in nuclear power generation. One is Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited and the other is Bharatiya Nabikya Vidyut Nigam Limited. So we are 50-50 between A and B. See, as per India-US civilian nuclear deal, India can maintain two types of nuclear reactors. Certain reactors in which we are using domestic fuel, those reactors, India can keep them outside the purview of International Atomic Energy Agency. However, the reactors in which we are using imported fuel, they will be mandatorily kept under the inspection of International Atomic Energy Agency. So there are at present 22 operational reactors of which 14 are under the International Atomic Energy Agency safeguards as these 14 reactors use imported fuel. So therefore, the correct answer for this question is option B. Some use imported uranium and others use domestic supplies. Now this question is with reference to steel slag. The question reads, steel slag can be the material for which of the following? Construction of base road, improvement of agricultural soil, production of cement. See, steel slag is nothing but byproduct of steel production. Traditionally, this steel slag, it has shown to have harmful impacts on the society, which prompted us to repurpose this waste product. Now, the unique property of steel slag is that it has high bearing capacity. So, it is now commonly being used in road construction, production of cement and related aspects. So, with this understanding, the correct option should have 1 and 3. Therefore, we arrive at options C and D. Now, point number 2, that is the improvement of agricultural soil. This one is tricky as we can use this option only if we are keenly following the news. News articles, it is reported that researchers have recently shown the fertilizer properties of the steel slag by which there can be improvement of agricultural soil. So the correct answer for this question is option D. Now this question is with reference to fertigation in agriculture. The question reads, what are the advantages of fertigation in agriculture? Controlling the alkalinity of irrigation water is possible. Efficient application of rock phosphate and all other phosphatic fertilizers is possible. Increased availability of nutrients to plants is possible. Reduction in the leaching of chemical nutrients is possible. Select the correct answer using the code given here. See, there has been a progressive increase in the difficulty level of agriculture-based questions in the prelims exam. This is one such question. First, let us understand what is fertigation. See, fertigation refers to application of fertilizers with the irrigation water. Here, when we say irrigation, it usually refers to drip irrigation or sprinkler irrigation. See, fertigation increases the efficient use of fertilizers and the nutrient availability at the root level. In particular, it increases the mobility of potassium and phosphorus. Now, the main advantage is that separate and frequent application of fertilizer is not needed when we go for fertigation. In addition, in this method, the fertilizer also gets effectively used by the crop. Here in this question, second statement requires a deeper understanding of the concept. And if one knows that this statement is incorrect, 
one can arrive at the correct answer option C. Now let us say why we say second statement is incorrect. See NCRT Floriculturalist book states that when an element forms precipitate with another substance commonly found in the irrigation water, it is not advisable to use this method. Phosphorus and anhydrous ammonia may form a precipitate in water that has high calcium and magnesium content. So they are not used in fertigation. So having this understanding will help us eliminate statement 2 which states efficient application of rock phosphate and all other phosphatic fertilizers is possible. Therefore the correct answer is option C. Now this news article is a profile article which talks about Hamas. If you remember in recent times we are constantly coming across news articles related to Israel-Palestine crisis. Even in yesterday's Hindu news analysis in line with the crisis we discussed about iron dome system of defense. See what happened was on May 10, 2021, Israeli troops attacked Al-Aqsa Mosque. May 10 this year was observed by Israel as Jerusalem Day so as to commemorate the capture of eastern part of this place in the year 1967. After the attack, immediately Hamas issued an ultimatum. See, Hamas is an Islamist militant group that runs the government in Gaza Strip. Hamas asked Israel to pull back all troops from Al-Aqsa compound. It also asked Israel to stop all actions of evicting Palestinian families from certain places of East Jerusalem. However, this call was ignored by Israel. And with the deadline mentioned in the ultimatum passing, Hamas launched dozens of rockets from Gaza and Israel responded with launch of its biggest operation against Hamas since the 2014 attack on Gaza Strip. So this is what happened. However, today's article mainly focuses on the profile of Hamas. See, the author describes Hamas as a group which is currently all-in-one. This is because it now has Islamists, militants and also nationalists. Now, initially, though it was just a charity group, now it has become a key controversial force of the Palestinians which is fighting against Israeli occupation. Now, in relation to Israel-Palestine conflict, we discussed it on May 11, 2021 Hindu News Analysis. Today, we will focus on Hamas. The syllabus relevant for the analysis is highlighted here for your reference. See, the origin of Hamas can be traced back to an association or a community called as Muslim Brotherhood. This brotherhood was established in 1928. It was established by an Egyptian Islamist, Hassan al-Banna, and it was established in the British-ruled Palestine. The Brotherhood was started with an intention to reorient the Muslim society. Over the years, in 1964, another organization was established which was called as Palestine Liberation Organization. See, it emphasized on Palestinian nationalist sentiments and it was focused on having an independent Palestine. But it was a secular organization, meaning it had an idea of Palestinian state where there would be equal treatment of Muslims, Jews and Christians. Now we know about the 1967 war where Israel captured the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan and it also captured Gaza Strip from Egypt. And after this war, Palestinian Liberation Organization became more vocal in its demand for independent Palestinian state. But even by this time, the Muslim Brotherhood, it stood away from politics. However, they kept criticizing the Palestinian Liberation Organization for their secular nationalism. See, even at this time, the Brotherhood's focus was mainly on upbringing of an Islamic generation and to rebuild a stronger, pious Islamic society and not to oppose the Israeli occupation. So, even after the war, Israel managed to establish contacts with Brotherhood leadership in the occupied territories. In fact, in 1973, Sheikh Ahmad Yasin, who was a cleric from the Muslim Brotherhood, he established a center called as Islamic Center. Israel recognized this center so as to be an association and this in fact helped the center to raise funds. And these funds were used for construction of mosques, educational institutions, even including the Islamic University of Gaza. Now the charity group or a charity institution as mentioned in the news article is what is referring to this Islamic center. And over the discussion we will see what is the connection between this Islamic center and the Muslim Brotherhood and also the Hamas. See, a most important event took place by the end of the decade of 1970s. This was the result of Islamic revolution in Iran. The result was that Muslim clerics who are mullahs in Iran, they can give governance in Iran. This has changed the landscape of Islamist politics across West Asia. Many Islamist organizations, including the Muslim Brotherhood, they witnessed the political success of mullahs in Iran and within themselves, they started becoming politically more ambitious and active. 
in fact the muslim brotherhood was waiting for the right moment to work against or to struggle against the israeli occupation the moment came in the year 1987 when there was palestinian uprising against the israeli occupation of west bank and gaza strip this uprising was known as intifada and the uprising in 1987 was called as the first intifada at this time the palestinian liberation organization called its supporters to join the uprising and even the muslim brotherhood also found it as an opportunity to enter the struggle against the israeli occupation at this time the muslim brotherhood under the leadership of sheikh ahmed yasin who established the islamic center issued a leaflet it asked palestinians to stand up against the israeli occupation and then in january 1988 the brotherhood also issued another leaflet under the name harakat al mukawama al islamia this means islamic resistance movement this is shortly known as or abbreviated as hamas meaning of hamas is zeal in arabic in the year 1989 hamas launched its first attack wherein it abducted and killed two israeli soldiers of course israel cracked down on this group and it arrested the founder yasin and it jailed him for life so so far we had the basic idea of the origin and activities of palestine liberation organization and the muslim brotherhood the islamic center and how it came with the islamic resistance movement or the hamas now let us see how hamas is different from the palestine liberation organization see the palestine liberation organization was modeled around the leftist guerrilla nationalist movements but if you take hamas it issued its charter in 1988 which was studded with anti semitic remarks meaning it had provisions that are hostile to jews and according to the charter palestine was an islamic waqf that is it is a property given to islam in the name of god for religious and charitable purposes It also specified that Palestine is a land that was consecrated solely for the Muslim generations until judgment day. And it also said that there is no solution to the Palestine problem except jihad because all initiatives of peace are nothing but a waste of time and acts of absurdity. And Hamas was strong in its resolution and in its approach according to its charter. Meanwhile we could find Palestine Liberation Organization which moved on to join peace efforts. so as to seek a solution to the palestinian issue on the other side hamas hardened its position hamas in fact opposed the oslo agreement as we know this agreement allowed formation of palestinian authority with limited powers within the occupied territories this agreement gave foundation for a palestinian interim self government in the west bank and gaza for a transitional period The agreement provides measures for transfer of authority from Israeli military government and Israeli civil administration to the authorized Palestinians. See when the Palestine Liberation Organization recognized Israel, Hamas rejected the two-state solution and in fact it vowed to liberate the whole of Palestine from Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. And in 1993 the Israeli government and Palestine Liberation Organization they agreed on a plan to implement two state solution as part of Oslo accords so as to establish Palestinian authority so this is the association of PLO with Palestinian authority however Hamas was against recognition of Israel and in fact over a period of time it developed into an organization with several branches having mainly three wings social wing that deals with islamic education and charity works military wing which is concerned with military planning and weapons acquisition and they also had a political bureau and uh, between 1990s and early 2000s hamas conducted several suicide attacks where it targeted israeli citizens in the year 2000 there was another popular palestinian uprising which was called as the second intifada at this time hamas were leading the uprising and hamas supporters fought street battles with israeli troops israeli troops of course they crushed the protests with brute force and israel also at that time taken a policy of targeted assassinations however hamas continued to target israeli troops and jews in 2005 because of hamas's violent resistance israel unilaterally decided to pull out of gaza this was considered as a great success of hamas or the islamic resistance movement and they have got lot of popularity during this period from 2000 to 2005 and here you can note that how the muslim brotherhood or the islamic center which were once in good terms with israel had become a rival in the name of hamas and had become a force to reckon with and in the year 2006 there was legislative elections in the palestinian territory and hamas successfully secured 74 out of 132 seats it also had the majority as well 
However, despite this, Hamas was unable to form the government due to opposition from Israel and many international powers like United States and some European countries because they designated Hamas as a terrorist organization. And in addition, there were also tensions between Hamas and Palestine Liberation Organization because of their viewpoints and their own future trajectories. See, in the 2006 election, even PLO also contested, but its main party, the Fatah party, got only 45 seats. So, because of the international pressure and tension from all sides, the then Palestinian president of the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, dissolved the Hamas government and he declared a state of emergency. See, he was president of Palestinian Authority as per the election in January 2005 for a four-year term to be the president. Now, the dissolving the government led to even more aggression and violent clashes between Hamas and PLO. Therefore, Hamas were ousted from the West Bank by PLO and in response, PLO was ousted from Gaza Strip. And since then, Hamas continues to hold the government at Gaza. And note that Israel has imposed a blockade on Gaza since Hamas began their governance there. But even then, Hamas continues to evolve firmly in their resolution and they never gave up their right to armed resistance. Until now, Hamas refuses to accept or recognize Israel. However, there is a change in stand, particularly since 2017, when it offered a hadna or a lasting ceasefire to Israel, if Israel is willing to return back to its 1967 border. And in 2017, it also came with a new updated charter, according to which it is not seeking war with Jewish people, but only with Zionism that leads to Palestine occupation. So, by this inclusion, it is reported that the anti-Semitic remarks were removed from its charter, which was originally present in the 1988 charter. Other than this change in stand, Hamas is strong in its view that unless Israel withdraws to the 1967 border, no peace can be made and that it will also not recognize Israel. But it is a kind of double stand that Israel if goes back to 1967 border, there will be Israel and also Palestine. Now, the article says that it is difficult for Hamas to drive back Israel to its 1967 border all by itself. However, it is special or unique for two reasons. One, it has emerged as a key force in Palestine's political landscape. Now, this means a solution to Israel-Palestine problem cannot be attained without taking Hamas into consideration. This is like saying for deciding the fate of Afghanistan, you should take Taliban into consideration. Now, secondly, in spite of many hardships like loss of its founding fathers or categorization as a terrorist unit, still Hamas continues to sustain and survive and has also become a force to reckon with. So these are some of the information with reference to the analysis of this news article in the profile page. In this discussion we saw about the evolution, the rise, the growth and the character of Hamas as per 1988 charter and the 2017 charter. We also discussed how Hamas differ from Palestine Liberation Organization. All these points that we have discussed will help us having a better understanding of the Israel-Palestine issues. With this discussion, now let us move on to the analysis of next news article. This news article states that Air India is airlifting zeolite from countries to help defense research and development organization in oxygen production. With the help of adopting technology from two private entities, DRDO is going to use pressure swing adsorption process and zeolite in oxygen generation. In this context, let us know what is this zeolite and we will also see briefly about pressure swing adsorption process. See, zeolite is the common name that is given to any member of family of hydrated alumina silicate minerals which contain alkali and alkaline earth metals. They are noted for their ability towards ion exchange. See, zeolite is also called as molecular sieve and these are microporous crystals. They are solids of aluminium silicate and they have small openings of fixed size so as to trap large molecules at the same time allowing small molecules to pass through. That is why they are called as molecular sieve. And because of these properties, zeolites have extensive application as catalyzed, as adsorbent and also as ion exchanges. See, zeolites are present in our everyday life. It is being widely employed as sorbents, as ion exchangers in detergents, then as catalysts in industrial processes. Then they are also used in the fields of oil refining, petrochemistry, in the preparation of chemicals and also in the preparation of fine chemicals. 
Now in the current context, zeolites are mentioned to be used to make on-site oxygen. See, atmospheric air contains 78% nitrogen, roughly, then about 20% oxygen. And here, zeolite adsorbs or it traps nitrogen on its surface to give out oxygen or to yield oxygen. So, as you can see, here zeolite acts as a molecular sieve as it traps nitrogen. Then the news article talks about pressure swing adsorption technology. See, what is this? technology. See, there are various technologies which are used for oxygen generation. For example, cryogenic distillation, then membrane separation. Then another one is what we call as pressure swing adsorption. Today, we are going to see about this pressure swing adsorption. See, it's a technology that separates some gas species from a mixture of gases. Main important thing is it is done under pressure and this pressure will be as per the molecular characteristics of the gases and as per the affinity for an adsorbent material. It's quite technical but just know something about this process. It has the advantage of operating at near ambient temperatures like near environment temperatures. Why we are saying this as an advantage in this method called as pressure swing adsorption? Because if you take cryogenic distillation techniques and few other methods of gas separation, they require ultra low temperatures. So to create an environment of ultra low temperature, we require a lot of energy and also we require a proper industrial setup. However, in this area, pressure swing adoption technology scores. And in this pressure swing adoption, adsorbent materials like zeolites, activated carbon and other molecular sieves are used as trap and they adsorb the target gas species at high pressure. The process then swings to low pressure where the adsorbed gas species will be desorbed or released. We saw high pressure and a swing to low pressure. That is why it is called as pressure swing adoption technology. Now another important application of pressure swing adoption technology is that it is highly helpful in the extraction of green hydrogen which is finding place as a green fuel option. So these are some of the important information with reference to the analysis of this news article wherein we discussed about zeolite and its importance and advantages. We also saw about pressure swing adoption technology. Now let's move on to next part of the discussion. This news article states that 30 people who were involved in anti-police violence were sentenced to death. They gathered in the capital marking the end of Ramzan but there was violence within the Muslim groups primarily over the right to mark the end of Ramzan. However, it also turned out to be anti-police violence and 30 people were sentenced to death. In this context, let us learn about this country. See, Democratic Republic of Congo is located in Central Africa. In fact, it is the second largest country on the African continent, first being Algeria. Its capital is Kinshasa, which is the largest city in Central Africa that serves as the official administrative, economic and cultural center of Democratic Republic of the Congo. Now, coming to its geography, on the north, we can see Central African Republic and South Sudan. To the east, we can see Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi and Tanzania. The southeast we can see Zambia. The southwest we can see Angola. Then to the west there is Atlantic coastline and also Republic of the Congo. So very important point, Democratic Republic of Congo has maritime boundary with Atlantic Ocean. Now coming to the drainage system, the Congo River is the main drainage system in the country. Along its course, the river passes through alluvial lands and swamps and it is fed by waters of many lakes and tributaries. It is the lifeline of this country. And coming to climate, most of DRC lies within the inner humid tropical or equatorial climatic region. The intertropical convergence zone is also a major determinant of the country's climate which is seasonally mobile zone. In addition to ITCZ, the proximity to the Atlantic Ocean and the maritime influences also act as factors of climatic differentiation. So all these factors have divided the country into four major climatic regions. One is equatorial climatic zone, then tropical or sub-equatorial climate zone, then Atlantic climate zone, then mountain climate because of altitude. Coming to soils of DRC, they are of two types, equatorial soils, savanna soils. See, the country is rich in natural resources with vast deposits of industrial diamonds, cobalt and copper. It is one of the largest forest reserves in Africa and also has half of hydroelectric potential of the African continent. 
Now, when it comes to vegetation of DRC, it is less vegetation and the vegetation varies between climate zones. The country has equatorial forests, grasslands, woodlands, mangroves, mountain forest, bamboo thickets and also afro-alpine vegetation. See, these are the flora and these are the fauna that are found in this country. Now, with respect to people in the nation, there are more than 200 African ethnic groups who are living in DRC. Of these, the large majority is Bantu people and also know that more than 200 languages are spoken in this country where it has four national languages. They are Swahili, Kiluba or Shiluba, then Lingala and Congo. However, the official language of this nation is French. It serves as the language of instruction, business, administration and international communication. The four national languages on the other hand are used in regional commerce and on the radio. And the nation also has a very sizable Christian population, most of whom are Roman Catholic. So these are some of the information with reference to the second largest country on the African continent, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now let's move on to next part of the discussion. This news article reports about a new king species that is found in the Western Ghats. So in this regard, let us see some relevant facts about skinks. See, skinks are largest and most diverse family of lizards that are living today and members of this family have a smooth and slender body and their forehead is covered with enlarged scales. They are highly diverse and they account for more than 25% of world lizard diversity and they have also repeatedly undergone limb reduction to various degrees. They usually feed on insects like termites, crickets and small spiders and they are capable of employing tail autonomy that is dropping the tail as a means of defense against the predators. See, skinks are also diverse reproductively, that is they include oviparous, viviparous and oviviparous species. Here oviparous species refer to those species that produce eggs which mature and hatch after being expelled from the body. Viviparous animals refer to animals that give birth to the developed live young individuals. That is, they give birth to offspring and in such species, both fertilization as well as development of embryo takes place inside the female reproductive system. And once the fetus development is complete, the mother delivers the baby. Even human beings are viviparous species. And if you take ovoviviparous animals, these are animals that develop an egg inside them, but the mother keeps the egg inside her body until it hatches. Some sharks are examples of ovoviviparous species. Coming to skinks, they are also ecologically important because in many parts of the world, they are the major predators of invertebrates, particularly arthropods. Therefore, they form an important strata as secondary and tertiary consumers in the food chain. Now, come to the news article. It reports about a new species of skink that was found by a group of herpetologists at Anakati Hills in Coimbatore. Now, this discovery is important because it is only the third skink species to be discovered from mainland India. Now, this species is called as Subdoluceps nilegrinsis. It has a slender body of just about 7 cm. It was sandy brown in color. Not much information is available about its breeding and feeding habits. And note that it was found in a dry deciduous area where it proves that even the dry zones of our country are home to skink diversity. See, most skinks are diurnal and they are also usually secretive. And because of this factor, not much is known about their natural and evolutionary history. See, generally skinks resemble snakes. This is because of their uh, inconspicuous legs or meaning that their legs are not much visible and also because the way in which they move on the land. Because of these factors, they resemble snakes. And this resemblance leads to their killing by humans. Human beings kill them thinking that they are venomous snakes. A news article reports that these skinks are non-venomous. While the discovered species in the Western Ghats is named as Subdolupsis nilegrensis, According to genetic studies, this new species is closely related to Subdoluceps pruthi, which is found in the parts of Eastern Ghats in India. Note that skinks face potential threats because of seasonal forest fires, housing constructions, bricklin industries, because of rapid urbanization, because of increased road networks in the area. These also threaten them to small geographical range, particularly the urbanization and road networks, they restrict their habitat. So these are some of the information with reference to the analysis of this news article where we saw about discovery of new skink species in Western Ghats in dry deciduous area. Now let's move on to next part of the discussion. Now see this news article from the world page. It is about Tianwan-1 and important milestones in Chinese space program. 
we will see about these aspects in this analysis. The syllabus relevant has been highlighted here for your reference. See, Tianwan-1 is China's first Mars mission. It consisted of an orbiter and a rover which is named as Zurong. Now, the meaning of Tianwan is questions to heaven or questioning the heavens. See, China launched Tianwan-1 in July last year. It successfully entered Mars orbit on 10 February 2021. Also recently, after months of orbiting, Tianwan-1 successfully landed a lander onto the surface of Mars and this lander carried the rover Zurong. The rover Zurong is named after a god of fire and know that so far only two countries have carried out a successful landing on Mars. They are the Soviet Union and the United States of America and now China joins in this prestigious list. First and foremost, why do we need Tianwan-1 or what is the objectives of this program? See, currently water does not exist on the surface of Mars. However, it was present earlier. How we are concluding this? This is based on dramatic dry canyons and river channels that are seen from the orbit of Mars. And there are also presence of minerals on the Martian surface. And these are minerals that can form only in liquid water. Though now water is not present on Mars surface, these minerals are present. So we are concluding that once upon a time on the Mars surface there was water. And around 3 billion years ago something happened to the atmosphere of Mars and most of the liquid water evaporated. However, some of it may still be underground safely shielded from the harmful solar radiation that falls on the surface of this planet. See, scientific community believes those ancient pockets of water may contain life even now. This is why many space programs are trying to explore Mars planet. See, China's Tianwan-1 will search for these pockets of water by the use of radar that is mounted on the Zurong rover. The rover will also provide first-hand materials for research on the planet's space environment, then about surface topography and also on soil structure there. See, Tianwan-1 will give China valuable experience of Mars and will provide a groundwork for a possible future mission which is time being planned as a sample return mission and this mission is planned to be carried out in the later part of this decade and getting Martian samples back to earth is a top priority for the scientific community. In addition to this, the leadership in China, they see Tianwan-1 as an important part of China's ambitions so as to complete or close the technological gulf that they have with the United States. They want to come on par with the U.S. And this can be seen in the statements issued by the Chinese president, according to whom Tianwan-1 is an important step in China's interstellar exploration and has also left a Chinese mark on Mars for the first time and is another landmark progress in China's space industry development. See, earlier China had tried to launch a Mars orbiter along with Russia. This happened in the year 2011 but that failed to enter the Mars orbit. However, in this attempt, China has hit the target on its own. Then this news article covers other important milestones in the Chinese space program. Let us see about them in brief. See, first significant milestone happened in the year 2003. See, in October 2003, China launched Senso-5. The speciality of this Senso-5 is that it carried first Chinese astronaut Yang Liwei into the space. Then in October 2007, China launched its first lunar mission, Chang'e 1, and this was followed by Tiangong 1. See, in September 2011, China launched Tiangong 1, which is a space lab, and it is also called as a precursor to the Chinese space station. In November 2011, China launched Inga 1, which is a Mars orbiter, and that was the one which was launched with Russia and failed to enter the orbit. Then in June 2012, China launched Zhenzhou 9. And this Zhenzhou 9, it docked with Tiangong 1 and it made first manned docking for China's space program. And then this achievement was followed by the launch of Chang'e 3, which was done in December 2013. It is the third moon probe for China. Then in September 2016, Tiangong 2 was launched and this accelerated the Chinese space station plans. Also in January 2019, Chang'e 4 was launched. It is a lunar probe consisted of a rover and lander. It made its first landing on the far side of the moon. That is the speciality of Chang'e 4. 
Then last year in July, as we already saw, Tian Wan 1 was launched, which we have discussed in this analysis. So these are some of the important achievements in Chinese space history. On April 30th, 2021, we discussed about China's successful launching of a key module for its permanent space station. And about this information, we request you to watch the analysis on that day. With this, we come to the end of analysis of this news article. In this discussion, we saw about Tian 11, Zurong rover, and some important milestones in Chinese space program. We have come to the last session, the practice questions discussion session. See this question, two statements are given. Statement 1, Democratic Republic of the Congo is a landlocked country located in Central Africa. See, the statement is incorrect. Yes, it is a country located in the central part of African continent, but it is not a landlocked country. It shares a short Atlantic coastline. Very important point. So, first statement is incorrect. Second statement, Tropic of Cancer passes through Democratic Republic of Congo. This statement is also incorrect because it is the equator that passes through DRC, not Tropic of Cancer. So the correct answer is option D, neither 1 nor 2 because neither statements are correct. This question is with reference to pressure swing adsorption which is recently seen in news refers to. Correct answer for this question is it is a gas separation technique. This technology is now being also used for extraction of hydrogen generation from atmosphere as well. Correct answer is option A. Now this question is with reference to skinks. Two statements are given, they are asking which of the other statements are incorrect. First statement, they belong to the largest and the most diverse family of lizards. This statement is correct. Second statement, they are venomous and they resemble snakes. See, they are non-venomous. Therefore, the second statement becomes incorrect. They resemble snakes in terms of their inconspicuous legs. That is, their legs are not much visible when we see them. And because of the manner in which they move on the land, they resemble snakes. Second statement is incorrect. So, the correct answer for this question is option B, two only. We have given you main questions for practicing. You may write the answers and take photograph or make it as PDF and upload it into your drive. And in the sharing settings, you give us anyone with the link can view. And then post the link of the particular document or PDF or image in the comment section for peer review. With this, we come to the end of today's The Hindu News Analysis. If you like the video, click the like button, comment, share and subscribe to Shankaraya's Academy YouTube channel for more updates and content on civil services exam preparation. Have a nice day.